This week, it's a Q&A episode all about masking tools in On One Photo Raw. Hey everybody, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to InPost. Today's episode is Q&A, and before I get into today's questions, I wanna get your questions. You can contact me through my website, comments on the video, Twitter, Facebook. If you wanna take a picture of your question and send it to me on Instagram, you can do that too. However you'd like to get a hold of me, I wanna hear from you. I wanna get your questions because those are the idea engine behind this show, and it makes it a two-way conversation. And uh, we'll all learn something. I know questions make me think about my photography, and hopefully my answers are helping you out. So with that, let's get into today's set of questions. These are all about masking questions in On One Photo Raw. First question is from Carol, and she asked, when I apply a preset, I used to be able to brush away the effect, and now I can't. Uh, What's going on? All right. Well, um, the answer is you still can. You can still brush away effects after applying a preset. You need to be operating either on the correct filter or operating on the entire filter stack as a whole. So let's talk about that here. I'll use this example. So as I recall, Carol, you were using the preset Holga Black and White in Hipster, which actually looks pretty darn cool in this lighthouse. And what you wanted to do was remove the effect or like do some like selective coloring. And so you're you're over in effects and you're trying to brush things away. Well, if you want to brush away black and white, you've got to go to the black and white filter. If I start my brushing, my masking right here, right? And I just start saying, all right, take stuff away. I'm taking away things from the vignette and that's not going to help you remove uh, black and white or do selective coloring. So what needs to happen there, let's go ahead and reset that mask. We would need to operate on the black and white filter. And then when I grab my masking brush and I start painting away, I should paint away where I can see things. See, there's the blue coming through. It's a little better. This was too white. So I start painting away. Then I can see I'm getting that selective coloring look. So you need to choose the correct filter. Now let me show you one other thing. Let me reset this mask at the very top in the overall settings. So none of our filters are open, but right up here, there is this mask button. And what this does is it masks everything. So this entire set of filters, I can take this, I can lower opacity of the whole thing, right? You see how that's that's changing? Or I can do brushing at that level. And so I'll brush all through here. And what I've done is I happen to have a 75-ish percent opacity. I'm removing all of these filters from this area that I've masked. So you actually have a lot of capability in removing just individual filters or downplaying the entire effect of a stack of filters or applying a stack of filters to just a portion of your photo with the mask that's in the overall settings area. Next question is from Mark and he asked, how can I control the mask density? Uh, Well, the answer depends on what masking tool we're using. And once again, it's best to look at some examples here. So let me add a a filter that will be very obvious that we know what's going on, like bleach bypass. That's going to be with this crazy color tint. Okay, so we can see that there's changes here. Now, let's say I want to mask something away and say I want to mask away, I don't know, the, the effect from the trees, but only at, say, 50%. And so the classic problem is I activate my brush and let's make my feather not so big. And I wanna say 50%, right? So we dial in our 50%. And I'd probably use the perfect brush for this because I'm talking about the trees. So I'd start working through here and I'd start working through here. And then I would let go of my trackpad or my mouse or I'd lift my pen off my tablet. I've stopped brushing. I press the O key, we can see, all right, I've affected this area, but now I wanna continue. And I start continuing here, and then I eventually bleed into the same area, and we have overlap. It's actually not too easy to see with the red overlay. Let's change that to the gray overlay. And we can see this double area where it's darker. I've you know, kind of double masked. So, um, We can't really change that. That's just the way the masking tools work. They're additive. 
And in most cases, we want that. So the workaround in this scenario would be take your opacity up and do it all the way and just mask everything that you don't want at 100%, right? So then O key, all this stuff is all just, you know, pure, pure black. Then opacity 50%. So I want a 50% net gain. I'll turn off my perfect brush. I'll go to paint in ginormous brush and I want to make sure I do this in one sweep one whole sweep what I've effectively done now is I've got 50% in it's a workaround it's the best that we can do with the masking brushes so if you are very pure that you want 20% of a mask on just a selected segment that's how you can do it you can mask that segment at 100% strength and then back it off by whatever delta percent you need to to get to your your final area honestly i rarely do this because masking is usually more about look and feel and less about numbers and precision but there is a way to do it now if we're using the masking bugs let me reset my mask here if i'm using a masking bug let's just drop one on there and we feather this around and say okay uh, i want this to be you know 49 percent and then I change my mind later. You know, I've I've done something else. I've played around with these sliders. Maybe I've added another filter, whatever it might be. I can still go back into the filter with the bug, choose the bug, and it's still here. And so I can select it and I can change that opacity. I keep getting my menu. There we go. I can change my opacity after the fact. So the masking bugs, you have a lot more control to say, I, I want to go back and change my mind. So Mark, hope that helps you out. Last question is from Marty, and he asks, do you have any tips for using the chisel or the blur mask tool? So uh, yeah, I do. Um, fundamental is low numbers. That's, that's generally what we want to do with these two tools. Uh, if you're not familiar with the tools, let's, let's talk about them really quickly here. Uh, so these are available in layers, and let's do this. Let's add a color fill layer, and um, actually black is just fine. We'll stick that underneath my photo and let's say i want to do some masking work here first so um i'll just do this quick and dirty with the perfect brush i'm going to reveal that black sky right over here okay so i've done that and the edge detection is working pretty good let me zoom in a few notches and move over but what we'll see is that there's some of this fringing going on here now, this is where the chisel tool can be helpful. The chisel tool basically shaves away pixels. So if I choose the chisel tool, which is right here, you see we get this size and amount. Amount is how many pixels do you want to shave away, and the size is the size of the brush. And now watch, I'll do a single brush stroke. I'm clicking and I'm dragging down, and you're going to see one pixel's worth of pixels are shaved away pixels worth of pixels and I could do the same thing all the way along the edges here now I do it a second time I do it a third time I do it a fourth time you see it gets additive and I'm starting to really chip away a whole lot and the thing about the chisel is if I used a larger number like 12 it gets very destructive very quickly so I tend to use very low numbers and just do repeated brush strokes for what I need to do Similar story for the blur mask tool. So here's the blur mask tool. You've got a size and an amount. Now I'll be a little more generous with the blur. Uh, and that's just to soften transition. So you can see if I brush through here, it's getting softer. Let's undo that and we'll do it at a very small amount, like one. And you'll just notice it smooths things out a little bit. So for this particular photo with that tree line with a lot of small, delicate details, a very low blur is a good choice. Now I'm zoomed in like well over 100%, so things are a little exaggerated when I'm brushing with one <laughs> strength on blur, but it's really to illustrate what's going on here. So those are the tips for chisel and for blur low numbers and do repeated strokes if you need to to get the the masks looking exactly how you want them and that'll do it for today's in post q a episode hope you've enjoyed it if you did let me know contact me through my website comments on the video share this with a friend and of course send in your questions love getting questions want to hear from you and i hope this continues to be a two-way conversation well until next time my name is scott davenport happy shooting
use a high level high and then say low that sounds stupid i do and at a high level i did it again go ahead and do that any way you want to get me the question